good morning. Happy Christian Family Day, and to those of you that are mothers, happy Mother's Day. My name is Kathy Welby, and I chair the worship team here. A sunny welcome to those of you who gathered here at the church this morning. We're glad you are with us. We will now uh, light, uh, sorry, the territorial, territorial acknowledgement, sorry. And I, I'm sorry, but I do not, ha do you have the words on the screen, Bob? No? Well, let us just remind everybody that we do worship and work on Treaty 1 territory, which is also the land of the Métis. Could we move on? I'm, I'm going to do the announcements now, Bob. Every time I get up here, you guys, there's something going on. <laughs> uh, first of all, I got some really great news this morning. Um, Diane and Kevin McKenty are celebrating their 40th anniversary today. <laughs> Besides myself, was there anybody else at the wedding? Diane and I were trying to figure that out today. <laughs> Only me. <laughs> That was because I was part of the choir at the time, and the choir all got invited. It was a lovely day. We partied at her mom and dad's house outside on Wallace Avenue. So it was a great day. I think it was a little cooler than today, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was windy that day, but we had a great time. So happy anniversary and blessings. Okay, I've got a couple announcements here today. So Luann, uh, as the chair of the profile ministry team, had previously announced that we'd been the profile team had been working on the documentation required to hire a term half-time minister starting September 1st, 2023. Well, this past week, we received very good news that the Pastor Relations Commission had approved our request. So the search to fill this position has begun. Uh, so please keep the work of this team and our church in your prayers as we go forward. Okay, do you enjoy being outside? Are you looking for some regular exercise once a week? Are you wondering how you can help out the church? Well, spring is here, the grass is risen, and we need volunteers to mow the church lawn for the months of June to September. Uh, the lawn mower is provided, so you don't have to walk over bringing it. Um, and if you're interested, there's a sign-up sheet located in the narthex. It's on a clipboard, you'll see it. You can sign up for one week, two weeks, a month, the whole summer, whatever, whatever works for you. Any amount of time will be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Uh, this morning, this, the worship service for the theme for today is called Kin to One Another. When we think about the word kin, relatives, siblings, parents immediately come to mind. But what about kindred spirits? Well, Mr. Google says a kindred spirit is much more than a good friend. Kindred spirits are those people who, as soon as we meet them, we feel that we have known them all our lives. I would suspect that maybe some folks around here feel that way about um, us when we meet here each Sunday. This morning, we welcome Brent Poole as our worship leader. Brent spent many years traveling the world with his job. And this morning, we finally get to experience some of the highlights from Brent's travels during our reflection time. Perhaps we will hear whether he found some kindred spirits in unlikely places in his journey. And lastly, I'd like to thank David Schmidt for leading and playing the music for us this morning. We light this Christ candle in recognition of this world, particularly this area of earth called Turtle Island, which was created by God before human time began. Our call to worship is responsive. Creator, parent of the human family. Gather to worship you. In baptism, 
We are called beloved children of God. As such, we gather to worship you. And who has brought us here, joyful and awed? We gather to worship in song, in prayer, in readings from your story, our story, in thoughts and reflections. Let us worship God. And we'll begin with our first uh, hymn, Voices United, number 222, Come, Let Us Sing. Creator of all of us, and we gather to worship you. We come as individuals, we come in family units, we come as neighbors and friends. We come here where we are known by name, welcome with all of our fragilities and our strengths. We gather with kindred spirits who long to live faithful to your calling. Guide us, inspire us, challenge us, comfort us, and nurture us in this time of worship so that we might be enabled to return to our daily lives, ready to engage fully with all of your creation. We pray. Amen.
It's fun time, kids. James and David, Nyla, I see you're here with me. Want to draw me up front, please? We're going to do an activity. But I'm going to need some help. If you can sit up there, sure. I got these be seen by the camera, so I'm just going to do something like this. Okay, you've heard a few words today about the service. What day is today? What comes to your mind? What day is today? Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Did you hear any other kind of day that it is today? Those ones, you, this one's an easy one. Those other ones you really had to pay attention to. I'm going to help you out, okay? Kathy also mentioned that it's Christian Family Day. Christian Family Day. And we have a seat. It's going to run And it's called Kin to One Another. Any idea what kin means? What does kin mean? It's a small word, but it means a lot. Any idea what kin means? People, yeah, it's people, yeah, for sure, it's people. It's people related to each other. So this is saying that we're all related to each other. And that's true, we are all related to each other. And I'm going to use this plant in our activity as a way to demonstrate that, okay? I'm a gardener. You garden? Yeah, do you like gardening? Yeah, I like gardening. It's my hobby. I don't collect stamps and I don't quilt. My wife, my wife's a beautiful quilter. I don't quilt. She gardens too, but I garden as well. You have a what? You have your own garden. Yeah, that's great. We used to have our own garden for our sons too when they grew up. That was their garden. We put, we put family uh, flowers and vegetables in it. This plant is called a coleus. Coleus. You've probably never heard of that plant, but I'll just write it down so you can see what the word looks like. C-O-L-E-U-S. Coleus. And coleus is a very popular plant. And this is like what I call my parent plant, because I garden all year round. I just don't garden from now until the winter. I garden all year long. In my basement, I have a bit of a greenhouse. I'm gardening legally, Greg. It's okay. <laughs> But I garden all year round. And one of the things that I do is I take a coleus plant, and one thing that's neat about it is if you snip a part of this plant, like right here, for example, pull off a couple leaves. If you put this in water and leave it for two or three weeks, look what happens. These have been sitting in water for a while. What's different about that than the one that I just cut off? It's got, yeah, it's got more purple. Yeah, this is a slightly different plant than that one. What's at the bottom that's not at the bottom of this one? Look at the bottom of this one. And look at the bottom of this. We're going for plant anatomy here now. What's at the bottom there? Roots, you're right. Those are roots. And the plant needs roots in order to grow. That's how it gets all the food from the soil that we're going to put it in. So the first thing I'll, I do is I cut off a bunch of these. And I've got like a hundred of these at my place at home. And I let them go in water for two or three weeks. And then I put them into their own little pot. And uh, let them grow. And then I put them outside when it gets a little bit warmer. So this is the parent plant. And these plants are all related to the parent plant. This isn't the exact plant. The plant these actually came from is like, I didn't want to bring it here and damage it. So I brought a smaller version of it. And so these plants are all related to the parent plant, just like we're all kin to one another. And so what we're going to do for a little activity is we're going to put these into some dirt. And I've already got dirt in pots. I've got one for each of you. And we're going to have to make a hole for that root to go in. What are these? Any idea? Have you ever seen these before? Chopsticks. Chopsticks, yeah. Have you ever used them? Yeah. 
they're neat. When I travel, Kathy mentioned I travel, I spend a lot of my time in Asia. I didn't, and I, if I didn't know how to use these, I starved. You really quickly learn how to use these, because when you say, can I have a pork please in Beijing, uh, they can't help you, most of, most of the restaurants. So you learn quickly how to use chopsticks in, uh, when you travel to Asia. But they have another purpose too. They make a as whole to put the root in. So I'm going to do one, and then I'm going to give one for each of you to do. So see, I'm just putting a right down to the bottom and making it nice and big. And I'll put that there, and I'm going to grab one of these guys here. And it looks a little bit long, so we're going to do a little bit of a trim. Can I get you to hold that just for a minute? Thank you. And I'm gonna, it's okay to cut a little bit off the bottom because it's got lots of roots still to do that. And then we're going to put that in there. And then we're just going to put some dirt, fill the hole a little bit. And you can give that to mom when you do it, okay? So I'm going to get, no, just take a second. Let's do one of these for each of you guys. We're going to do it in here because I want to keep the dirt in one place. So why don't you come around this chair here. I'll get all three of you up here. <laughs> One at a time, grab this chopstick and put it right in the middle and swirl it around. You can grab this chopstick here, Nylon. Come up here and pop it in here. And swirl it around a little bit. Okay, and then give that to your brother. And you can do this one here. Okay, now grab one of these. And we'll probably have to do a trim job. Oh, that look along that root. Oh, sorry, you know what? Let's put this over top of the water. Or put it right over top of there, yeah. And I'll get those uh, shears. And we'll just cut off a little bit. Just hold it up a little bit for me. And let's cut off, say, that much there. There we go. And, okay, you want to grab one of these guys? Here, I only grab one of these. And I'll give it a little trim. Okay, there we go. <coughs> And then you want to grab one of these? Perfect. We'll just cut it off right there. Okay. Pop it in. Excellent. And now you got a Mother's Day present. So if you want to leave them up here, because it's a little bit messy at the bottom, because the holes, there's holes in the bottom to allow the earth to breathe. So you can leave them up here, and after church, after you're done downstairs, you can come up and take them. But we'll leave them up here to keep the mess in one place, okay? Now, I want to go back to the board just for a second. If you look at this word that we put up here, we're talking about kin. One of the commandments in the Bible, what's a commandment? You ever heard of a commandment? What is a commandment? It's one of the things, or many of the things, that God and Jesus asked us to follow. Thou shalt not uh, kill, thou shalt not steal. Those are all commandments. Well, in the Bible, it talks about the greatest commandment in um, Matthew chapter 22. What's the greatest commandment? And it's kind of a two-part greatest commandment. It says, uh, love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And it also says to love yourself as your neighbor. And I think that means that we're all kin to each other. And if I have one letter, what does that say? Kind, yeah. So not only are we kin to one another, but we need to be kind to one another. Okay? So what we're going to do, I brought a short prayer, and then we're going to go downstairs with Luann. So I'll ask you to bow your heads, please. And let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this special day to celebrate all Christians as part of our family. And as part of your family, God. And we give special thanks to the mothers in the world. And to those who mother us along our journey. Amen. Okay, so you're going to go downstairs to Luann, and we're going to sing hymn number 365 in Voices United. Uh, Jesus loves me, the old classic. <laughs> Jesus loves me. Thank you. Boys and girls, you did great.
O God of story, in the beginning you created humankind. The Bible contains your story of love and encouragement and challenge to your creation, to your children, and to us. Today, may our hearts and minds be open to hear what your spirit is saying to us, we pray. Amen. Our first scripture this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 13. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have hope and love abide. These three and the greatest of these is love. And the second scripture is from John 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. I've got a question for you. Why are you here? Why am I here? Well, I'm here because Kathy said, you better be here on Sunday, Brent. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. But why, why are we here? A chance for fellowship? Makes good sense. A, a ticket to heaven? Yeah. Maybe a chance to hit the reset button on life for the next week? Yeah. Maybe you were hoping to, I guess, the parent from Squishy the Frog. I got bad news for you folks. Squishy croaked. <laughs> he lived up to his name when he tried to hop over the roof last week. <laughs> when we go to Costco, we know why we're there. When we go to the dentist, we know why we're there. Why are we here? Look at outside, it's beautiful. It's a gorgeous, sunny, 28 degree day. What are you sitting here for? Entertainment? Don't you have anything else to do? Don't you have any other place to be? Look around. Lots of other people found other, found other things to do and other places to be. If you happen to have caught the last issue, June issue of the of your magazine, there's an article on religion in Canada. Who's growing? Who's declining? And what does it all mean? 
in the United Church of Canada from 2011 to 2021, the number of, of affiliates has declined by 40%. That's the greatest out of the three, the three largest denominations in Canada, Catholic, United Church, and Anglicans, 40%. I think that's conservative if you think of our church, if you look around our church back to 2011. So why am I saying all this? Just to give you a bit of a background to what I want to reflect on, and Kathy laid a groundwork, I, almost like you read my, my message, Kathy. Yes, I did a lot of traveling, and yes, I'm going to try and tie it in with being kin to one another and keep the, uh, the theme of the, uh, of the Sunday going. So for the last, for 20 years of my, the last 20 years of my career, I did international education. I started off as a high school biology teacher, I got into school administration, and then I got into divisional administration. So I was the divisional administrator for the international student program in a school division in Winnipeg called Pembina Trails, South Winnipeg. What we did was we recruited students from around the world. There's students everywhere that want to come to Canada to study. They also go to Australia, New Zealand, United States, so we have competition. We have big competition. But a lot of them want to come to Canada, and a lot of them want to come to Winnipeg. And sometimes you wonder, as, as I remember last week, uh, Raymond, or was it last week or two weeks ago, Raymond was saying about him coming to, to Winnipeg, and the officer saying, you know, go to Winnipeg is too cold. Well, I would have Brazilian students come here in the middle of February, or end of January, even the semester change, and they get off the plane out in the airport, and it's like minus 30, and they've come from like plus 30. And they would say, they say, does it always hurt when you breathe here, Mr. Poole? I said, you'll get used to it. You'll get used to it. International education is a big deal uh, in, in, uh, in Canada. When I was working, uh, it was quoted as a 5.5 billion, with a B, dollar industry. 5.5 billion dollars. Students pay tuition fees because they're not funded by the government of Canada. So they paid $11,000 to come to our school division. Then they have to have a place to stay. So they stay with homestay families. They pay $800 a month there. So that's another $8,000. So by the time the students fly back and forth and the parents fly back and forth to visit a couple times and they pay homestays, they pay tuition, it's well over twenty twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000. And that doesn't include spending money or anything else. And this is for kindergarten, right to postgraduate. So lots of university students are international. 10% of the University of Manitoba students are international. They buy cars. They buy houses. They rent houses in their rent apartments. So there's a lot of income uh, to help support the school divisions and the universities. We had a student in our school division that came in grade 7 and graduated in grade 12. And they stayed with the same homestay family. In fact, the biological children of the homestay family were born in during that time. And that student actually lived there longer. By the time she'd left, uh, they, she'd lived there longer than the actual biological children had, had of those homestay families. Had a great opportunity to meet some interesting people because we these big national conventions in Canada to strategize how do we get students, how do we attract students to Canada, how do we attract students to Manitoba and to Winnipeg. And I got to meet some, meet some interesting folks. So John, I'm going to ask for the first couple of slides, please. I got to meet Joe Clark, if you remember Joe Clark. Uh, the next slide, please. Got to meet our former Governor General, David Johnson. Pretty interesting uh, experience to meet people from across the world and across Canada. And they gave me that opportunity to get to know a little bit more about the government and how the government works. So they funded some of our activities as well as uh, helping to get some of the students here. How do we find these students? Go to recruitment fairs. Uh, the next slide, John, please. Let's pick a recruitment fair. Go. It's a trade show. But I'm not selling computers, and I'm not selling boats or trailers. I'm selling in education, public education, in a trail school division. And so thousands of students and parents would come each uh, to the fairs, and we would try Convince them, come to Winnipeg, come to Pemina Trails. Pemina Trails in Winnipeg was not the only one. St. James was there, River East Transcona was there, Winnipeg One School Division, which is where this uh, church is located on, Winnipeg One. Uh, several school divisions in Winnipeg had uh, international students, and in Manitoba. Uh, Flin Flon had her had an international program for a while. It's, it's a tough sell to Winnipeg. Try and sell like tell a student you want to go up to Flin Flon, but the guy that did it, Glenn Smith, and Marie remembers him well. <laughs> He could sell flint flan heartbeat. 
He had from Brazil coming off the flim flop. Slide, please, John. I need a translator. I, I'm blessed with the English language. I don't speak Chinese. I don't speak Ender or, or uh, Korean. So I had a translator hired, and the people that organized these fairs hired translators. Most of them were kids. There was money for them, uh, but they were a necessity of what I did. We needed to have trans to communicate because the parents were the decision makers. They're the ones that had the money. A lot of them didn't understand English, so the kids might have understood English. Yeah, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. But you had to talk to mom and dad because they're the ones paying the bill. A lot of these fairs were held in Canadian embassies, so the government supported this. Uh, next slide, John, please. You're at the Canadian embassy in Tokyo. It's a really neat building. Uh, you go up this escalator. Uh, it's about three stories of one escalator. It takes you like a couple minutes to go up it. Uh, to the top of it, and right behind there is the uh, uh, for the ambassador, uh, ambassador to Japan, which is facility. Uh, just to show you that I have sometimes brought a friend along. Next slide, please. When the kids got older, when they were leave on their own, Marie was uh, able. To, so that's a picture of her in front of the Tokyo Embassy as well, just from a different location. So a lot of the fairs were held in. in over my 20 years, I had 134 international trips, 134, to around 18 countries. I tried to count them up, and I kind of stopped at 18. So I'd fly to Toronto, or I'd fly to Vancouver from Winnipeg, depending on where I was going, I'd leave Canada to Asia, to Europe, to South America, to Central America. And each trip usually had about six flights by the time I got there and back. So if you do the math, it's over 800 times a year, or 800 times of my career that I've boarded a plane, 800 times. I've been to Hong Kong and Korea and to Japan each about 25 times. We call the recruitment trips missions because trips sounded glamorous, and it wasn't. <laughs> so we decided, as Manitoba, we're going to coin these terms, uh, coin the term missions. We're not going on trips, we're going on missions. Each one was about two to, three, two, two to three weeks long, and I got anxious when I'd go on these missions. Lots of planning for the mission, because I was leaving work behind. I was the director of our program, and the program had to run. I had 200 kids here, and those kids had to be taken care of in school and educated, so I had to make sure they were taken care of while I'm away for two or three weeks. Uh, so I got anxious at first leaving home with the kids. Uh, and then ask my court, like, I'd be on the, oh, did I bring the right banners? Because I'm in a booth with these banners, right? And did I bring Portuguese banners instead of Spanish? I often set my brochures ahead of time. Are they going to arrive in time? I don't know. I gave them lots of time to get through customs. You're hoping that when you get there at your booth, there's a box of brochures there. Because if you're not, it's a whole different event. There's a blizzard in the forecast. Will I be able to get out of Winnipeg? The weather is bad in Toronto. Will I make my connecting flight? Did I bring my passport? I had a friend who lost her passport in Toronto in the process. She was going to South America. But she lost her passport. She found it again, but she phoned me in panic. Said, I don't know where it is. I, I, I had it, and I lost it. One time when I was going, I was in the Winnipeg airport, gone through security, and I hear... If there's a burnt pool in the departure area, please report for security. I said, okay, that's interesting. That's never happened. So I go up to security. I said, I'm burnt pool. There's a mess for me. He needs the keys to the car. <laughs> so I drew Marie and myself had gone to the airport. She comes this by. She left. I had the keys on the other side of the security. It resolved. It. But things like that you worry about, you get anxious about. This is called, um, this is what I call present, presenter's privilege. Next slide, John, please. She worried. <laughs> Doesn't look too worried there, but my mom worried a lot. And I would give her my itinerary and make her feel where it was. I was doing and somebody phoned, oh no, he's in, he's in Seoul right now, and he's going to be going to Hong Kong next week. It gave me comfort knowing that she knew where I was going to be at least. My first trip, well, all my trips, or 
at the beginning, most of my trips were alone. And my first trip was in 1997 to Hong Kong, one of my favorite places. And I've been there at least 25 times. And there was over 100 Canadians doing what I was doing at a fair, selling education, and thousands of students and parents shopping for Canadian education. And I remember the pressure of feeling on. You always felt on. You're representing Canada. You're representing Manitoba. You're representing Winnipeg. I'm representing my school division. One wrong word can make or break a deal because you're selling. And again, it could be misinterpreted. You might think, I don't think I said anything offensive, but mom or dad might have been offended by what I said. And all of a sudden, that person goes to Toronto because of something I don't know what I said wrong. So there's always that feat about being on. Lots of pressure. And then when I remember that back in 1997 when I was in Hong Kong, going back to my hotel room after the fair, uh, small little room in Hong Kong, uh, TV, one English channel, BBC. What am I going to do now? It's the end of the day. I did haven't met anybody that I could spend time with here. What am I going to do? So what I did to try and, find, try and unwind was I went uh, walking around downtown after the fair. A little bit of a feeling of comfort because it's a, it was a British colony, Hong Kong was. So there's lots of English, there's lots of Caucasians around, lots of Marks and Spencers. If you remember Marks and Spencers, those are old enough to remember Marks and Spencers. So that added a little bit of comfort, but I still felt alone. And then I heard chimes, church chimes, and I fall. And I was on the island. If you know Hong Kong at all, there's a Kowloon area, and then there's Hong Kong Island. And Hong Kong Island is where I was. And I, the chimes drew me to a, an area called Central. So in Hong Kong, there's different areas. Uh, and Central is the area where I was and where this church was, because this church chimes that I followed. And it was St. John's Cathedral. The next slide, John, please. It's an Anglican church, British, it makes sense. Beautiful old church. On the front door, or not on the front door, but at the you a little tiny plaque that says that it costs uh, 40,000 Hong Kong dollars a day to operate that church. In our world, that's 7,000 Canadian dollars a day. $7,000 a day. That's a $2.5 million budget. Look at how we get stressed with our budget. I can't imagine the stress of doing it with that. See how big this church was. And so I went inside. The next slide, John, please. That's the inside of St. John's Cathedral. And Bree's been there. Beautiful building. Beautiful stained glass in the front. And I went in there, and all of a sudden this anxiety, this happiness I felt, went away. There's pews, and a chancel, and Bible, and Christians. Stained glass. All of a sudden, you get that feeling of, I'm not alone anymore. Maybe that's the feeling that you get today when you came in here. Is that the feeling you get when you come in here? Familiarity? Pews or chairs? Piano? Choir? Stained glass windows? So for me, that was an epiphany. So I started to ascend 10 service at St. John's Cathedral every Sunday that I was in Hong Kong. Nowhere else did I get that feeling of comfort, of being home away from home. Not at a baseball game in Osaka, not at museums in Mexico, or at the zoo in Vietnam, or on the golf course in Thailand. Funny story about the golf course in Thailand. I met the fair in Thailand, and a parent who had been a big time came up to say, well, do the fair, Brent. I don't know, hang around, have a beer maybe. Want to come golfing? I said, well, it's, the fair's over at five, like it's dark at six. No, no, the golf course is all lit up. Tee to green, 18 holes, all lit up. So I said, yeah, I'll come. So I, it was a great experience. You don't, he has, everybody has a caddy and a cart, and they put your tee on the ball, and they'll, you know, when it gets on the green, they'll clean it off, and they'll put it down, and they'll pick it out of the cup. You don't touch anything. And it was just phenomenal playing in the pitch block. As long as you stayed in the fairway, you're okay. There wasn't a whole lot of light in the bush. But as long as you're in the fairway, you're in shape. So I didn't feel, even then, I feel a comfort that I felt in St. John's Cathedral. Not even in the Canadian Embassy in Tokyo. Because after the fair, they would often invite us to their lounge. 
and their lounge was a beautiful lounge with a big screen TV. So you'd go up there and you'd be served most in Canadian beer. And you'd be watching a rerun of a hockey game because it's rerun because everything's like 13, 14 hours ahead in Japan. And you feel home, but you don't feel home. Not like I did in St. John's Cathedral. So even there did I feel that kind of comfort. So it was a, an epiphany for me to go to church uh, in another country. So for the, effect, for the next 20 years, I followed that epiphany. And I became comfortable traveling, more comfortable traveling. Made many great friends, both nationally and internationally. And so I found a church in most cities that I visited, even in the middle of the central, even in the middle of the jungle in, uh, in Guatemala. Next uh, slide, John, please. When I was in Guatemala recruiting, I had a day off. You don't always get days off. You don't plan days off, but just the way the flights work, they don't fly in and out of Guatemala every day. So I had a day off. So what am I? So I researched a little bit. End of the, uh, what I did was I hopped on a plane the next day and flew to a place called Tikal, T-I-K-A-L. Tikal is where the Mayan people, a group of the Mayan people lived and grew up. This is a picture from Tikal. That is a temple on the right-hand side. You can actually climb up that, uh, step by step by step. It's kind of scary because there's really no, you're on your own. Uh, there's no rail, there's no ropes, you just climb up and climbing up is not so bad. Coming down is actually more uh, is scary than going. Uh, the next slide, John, please. What was neat about the mine people, from what I understand and what I've read, is look how these things stand out of the jungle. The closer you get to heaven, the closer to God you are. That's their philosophy. The closer you get to heaven, the closer you build, the higher you build, the closer to God. How do they build these things? There's, these are big pieces of limestone. What I understand, again, is that, well, the, this is a fact, that the mine leaders were very intelligent people. They understood math. They understood astronomy. And they understood when things like this were going to happen. And they would, oh, the people, we're going to build this, and you're going to help me build this, or I'm going to make the sun disappear. And they had it all in their timing when the eclipse would happen. And they say, we're going to start. Only I'll make it disappear, but I'll make it come back if you keep building. And they used a scare tactic, and it worked. These are monstrous, monstrous uh, huge things in the middle of the jungle in uh, in Guatemala. But not even there did I feel that feeling. In Tokyo, I was looking for a church. As I had this epiphany, I want to look for a church wherever I go looking for churches on and I see Tokyo Union Church. Well, the Union's close. It's got to be something like ours. So Tokyo Union Church I went and visited. And again, Marie's been there as well. And so, uh, next slide, John, please. This is, oh, sorry, just keep it there. So Tokyo Union Church, uh, they have a point in their service where you get to introduce yourself to everybody. And so the minister would stand up. Anybody sitting here that wants to say, oh, well, I kind of stand out in Japan. A, a little sidebar. When I'm in Germany, uh, I go into, I, whenever I travel, I, first, one of the first things I do is I go to a store and grab food. You, you want comfort food. You're mixed up, your stomach's mixed up, mixed up you're 14 hours ahead, uh, and you just feel like fruit. And so I go into a store. So in Germany, I go into this store. And I'm two or three people behind, and the cashier's there, and she's uh, speaking German to the people in front of me. And then I come up there, and she starts speaking English. I said, well, that's strange. She said, you know, when I'm in Asia, yeah, I don't look Asian, so you can speak English to me. But when I'm German, I'm not that far from German looking. I mean, I'm not German, but I'm not that far. And that's what she said. I said, can I just ask a question? How come you switched to English when I came up blind? You don't look German, she said. And I don't know what that means, but she was able to pick me out as a Caucasian that's not looking German. So back to Tokyo Union. So the minister says, anybody here uh, want to say hello? So I said, okay, I'll, 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 I'll go out on a ledge and I'll stand up. And I introduced myself as Brent Poole from Winnipeg, Grace Street United Church. And, you know, they gave me a little applaud. Then I sit down and the guy in the, behind me tapped me on the shoulder and says, 
I'm from St. James in Winnipeg. <laughs> so after the service, I had coffee with him, and he talks, and you know, he's been there for a while. He works there. He's the treasurer of the church. Uh, but again, small work, kin to one another. Keep that same theme running. Kin to one another. I wasn't far from uh, comfort from people that I knew. Many of the churches that I visited were very small, which is, this picture comes in. It's a, it's, a, it's a chapel. It's not a church. Anybody recognize it? Don't expect so, but it's the chapel in Vancouver Airport. And so every time I went to Vancouver, one of my stops was there. Just felt good. The churches too. The next picture, John? On um, the spectrum, if anybody's been to uh, Cologne, Germany, this is called the Dome, the Cathedral, the Dome in Germany. Huge monstrosity. And the outside always has scaffolding because it's limestone. And it always has the acidic uh, burning on it. So they're always cleaning it. But it's just a huge, huge, massive. So both I would visit, I would pop into these kind of churches. Uh, is there another picture, John? Next one, please. Yeah, that's what it looks like on the outside. You see the black on it. They're always cleaning that. And I've Part of this church was rebuilt after the war. I think it part of it got destroyed in the war uh, and rebuilt. But it just stands out. When you go there on the train, it just stands out. Like our um, Human Rights Museum stands out when you're at the right point. It just pops out. That's how this is about when you're coming into the, into the city on the train. So the country may have been different. The language, the culture may have been different. But that feeling of being in a good place, a good space, never changed. And this carried over to Canada. When I travel in Canada, both of the boys' baseball or hockey, or when my, the conferences I was telling you about, I'd go to churches in Halifax, in Vancouver, uh, in Kenora, hockey tournaments in Kenora. Well, it was uh, Knox United in Kenora. Brandon, our front sign says more than just Sundays, which I think is a reflection on our community outreach on top of everything else. We have great community outreach. I remember having lunch uh, in Taiwan with the uh, person who was doing what I was doing in a private Catholic school uh, in Ontario. Her name was Sister Therese. And Sister Therese and I were sitting there after lunch, and just chit-chatting, and I said, what did you do this morning? She said, I went to church. I kind of thought about that for a second. I said, you went to church? Yeah, she said, yeah, it's a great way to start your day. I said, well, really? Yeah, she said, well, I didn't, well, I where I work in my school, there's a chapel there. I can go to church every day. Here I struggle when I travel. She did more than just Taiwan. I would see her many times throughout my, my trips. And she said, you know, it's find a church, but I would find one in every That for me was another company. When you travel to Asia, your biological clock gets turned upside down. I talked about the time difference, 13, 14 hours difference. So I, when I realized that, uh, when I was visiting St. John's, I said, I'm looking at their boat, and they have services every weekday at 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, I'm awake at 4 o'clock in the morning. Why do we get 4 o'clock in the morning? I said, I'll test out Sister Teresa's theory, uh, and I'll go to church on, on, uh, at 8 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. And so I did. So I woke up, hop on the subway, take the half an hour ride to the, to the church, and there was a, a small service going on, like five, ten people. One of the clergy from the from the, from the uh, cathedral uh, ran the service. There was communion there, and I started to do that as many weekdays as made sense for me in terms of my work schedule. Uh, but she she was right. It was a great way to begin your day. To get the comfort. And so this carried on when I realized churches offer services and other events throughout the day and the week. It's not just Sundays. Our church is more than just Sundays. Their churches are more than just Sundays. I remember attending an evening event at Seoul Anglican Church in Seoul, South Korea. And uh, one of the chaplain to the Queen was there, former chaplain to the Queen was there. And you, if you were at my father's memorial service, um, you may, you may remember me saying this, that one of the things that still sticks in my mind that he said was, don't tell me what you believe. Tell me what you do. 
and I'll tell you what you believe. Don't tell me what you believe. Tell me what you do, what you believe. In other words, walk the talk. And maybe, just maybe, that's why we're here. Are we here to walk the talk? Is that something personal that we have to decide amongst ourselves? Today, I still watch online the St. John services. With the pandemic, exactly like Grace Street, we had um, just TV or like online services with nobody, and then people slowly came back in, and they've carried on their online services just as we have. And so I watch them, sometimes live, which is like Saturday night at 8 o'clock, other times Sunday or later in the week, but I watch them. I feel good about it. It, it connects me with somewhere I went to for like 20 years. Marie often joined me, as I mentioned later, when Andrew and Riley were big enough to uh, be left alone. And we visited churches. We went to the, a church in Ukraine, which is kind of surreal now. In Kiev, Ukraine, we walked around. A lot of these churches are open. Like when you walk around Winnipeg, a lot of the churches aren't open all day. Um, but when you walk around a lot of the other bigger cities, they are. In Ukraine, it was, these churches were open. And Marie and I would pop into them. Go to John, please. That's... Uh, the uh, Seoul Anglican Church in Seoul, Korea. Next one, please. This is a church in um, Ukraine, or Portugal, sorry. <laughs> we were in Portugal. Uh, one of these churches, actually, there's no picture of it, they were preparing for a funeral on the outside of it. They had postings of whose funerals going to be held that week. But these old, old buildings, uh, that just gave you that feel good about being there. Again, familiarity, crosses and stained glass and pews. And you know, I've been to several of these churches. And in fact, uh, Echo John just second. This is kind of one of the churches, and I've seen this uh, in other churches. In, in for example, uh, uh, St. John's Anglican Church in Hong Kong has them, where you can light a candle in the memory. And it gives you a chance to get to just sit back and reflect quiet time. This was in one of the churches in um, in Portugal. The next one, John, please. So I on uh, the second, this is where we were. This I like I love that cross uh, at the front of the sanctuary. But we went to church. Second day, okay. didn't understand a word. Didn't understand. Didn't we knew we weren't going to understand a word. We knew it was the Portuguese. It was fine. We didn't need to understand a word. We got the idea. Being people, we kind of we, sometimes we recognize them, at least the tune of the hymns. But the the protocol is all the same: communion and, and for hymns and sitting down and for the scriptures, sitting down. It was very a, a very familiar setting being there with go uh, during the second uh, day of, or the second Sunday of Lent. What did I learn from my 20 years of being um, of traveling globally? I learned I'm not alone. I'm never alone. We aren't alone. I learned we aren't alone. If you remember, those that go back to the Gordon Fulper days, Gordon stood almost on this very spot in his last sermon, and his last words were, you are not alone. And our creed, which we're going to read shortly, reassures us that we are not alone. We live in God's world. And if I was going to make one slight change to that, I would say, to bring this all together, to wrap up, we are not alone. We live in God's world. We are all kin to one another. Thanks be to God. Amen. And we will join... In voices, more voices, number 27. Create God, you get.
And so let us repeat together our new creed from the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new the works of others planted by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God has blessed our lives with relationships, joy-inspiring and challenging. In response to God's blessing in our lives, we offer our time, our talent, our listening, and our gifts of money through envelope, e-transfer, and power. We sing our offering song as we pray. You have blessed our lives with relationships that both inspire and challenge. We offer these gifts that we might continue to build relationships with one another and with your whole creation. Bless these gifts that they may bring wholeness and life abundance to all of your people. We pray. Amen. Our faith blesses us with the stories of others who have sought to live in life-giving relationships. As we remember these siblings in faith, remind us of your guidance and presence with us. God of Moses, Aaron and Miriam. God of Mary, Martha and Lazarus. God of siblings who care for one another, offer support and challenge, celebrate together and work together and argue together and grieve together. We are thankful for their witness as they have done May we also seek to live in life-giving relationships with those we would name as siblings. God of Eli, Hannah, and Samuel, cross-generational colleagues, mentors, and trusted leaders in faith, remind us of the opportunities we have to nurture and to care, to mentor and to discern with one another in this faith community. May we embrace the trust that is offered and shared with respect, care, and humility. God of Ruth and Naomi, who embraced each other despite differences of race and cultural traditions and chose to be family for one another. For all who chose to be family, may your love and hope be sustained day by day. God of Simon and Andrew and James and John, who left the familiar to build new community with Jesus and his followers. Though faithful, they had moments of doubt, of fear, of denial. 
at our moments of doubt, fear, and denial, may we remember to trust and to take one step at a time. God of Hagar, Abraham, and Ishmael, God of Sarah, Abraham, and Isaac, God of the complicated and the jealous and the broken, remind us this too, remind us that this too is real and then to walk with us through these troubling times. God of Mary and John, call to relationships that stretch beyond blood to care for one another. You invite us to reach out in welcome, support, and care for one another. God of the past, God of the present, God of tomorrow, help us to live in relationships that seek justice, love kindness, and ground ourselves in your love for us. And we continue in praying together, sharing the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our closing hymn, Very appropriate, more voices on 78, Who is My Mother? Go and act for the care of creation. Go and learn for the sake of creation. Go and pray for the love of creation. And may the God of care enfold you, the passion of the risen Christ embolden you, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit empower you now and forever. Amen. Amen.